Hey everybody, it's Dave. Thanks for watching. As always, today we have a special guest in the background. I don't know if you can see him there, but we do have Teddy hanging out there. Hey buddy. <laughs> uh, he also appreciates you tuning in. Um, today I want to talk to you about, well, first of all, the news around SpaceX selling some launches to Amazon for their Kuiper Constellation. This is big news, something that a lot of people never expected would happen. But more than that, uh, a viewer on Twitter mentioned recently that he thought it'd be cool to check in on the other rockets that will be launching Amazon's Kuiper Constellation and see how their progress is shaping up. And I think with this new announcement, it's a perfect time to do that as well and sum it all up. As you do know, I have hoped that down the line anyway, this could be a potential customer for Neutron. So the question I guess people might be asking me is, am I disappointed now that SpaceX is getting some of these Amazon launches? The answer to that is no, but we'll dive into that in a little bit more detail later on. If you haven't already, please do consider hitting subscribe. I do appreciate every subscriber so much. Uh, with that out of the way, let's dive into Amazon's Kuiper Rockets. So just to rewind a little bit, this is the original Amazon contract awarded back in April 5th of 2022, the biggest commercial rocket launch contract ever, coming to about $10 billion, massive values, and Amazon awarding these contracts to three launchers, three rockets, one being, of course, Jeff Bezos' own Blue Origin with their upcoming new Glenn rocket, the second being ULA's Vulcan rocket, the third being... Ariane Space with their Ariane 6 European rocket. So that's uh, old news. It was interesting at the time because none of the rockets were actually flying yet. So Amazon was really banking on them getting ready in time. But uh, let's shift to today now. And this is the shocking news. Amazon buys SpaceX rocket launches for Kuiper Satellite Internet Constellation. So I found this very surprising, and uh, I was talking to someone on Twitter. He said, you know, Dave, why are you surprised? This makes perfect business sense for both companies. Sure, SpaceX will want to get paid for as many launches as they can, and Amazon just flat out needs to be able to launch, and these rockets haven't been doing it clearly. Beyond that, the Falcon 9 is really the cheapest option to get their constellation up today. And my response to that is, you're absolutely right. It does make business sense for both sides, especially for Amazon's side. A little bit more questionable from SpaceX's side whether they want to launch a competitor. But regardless, what surprises me is not that you know they would do this now so much. Uh, it's in the context that they didn't do it a year and a half ago. Because a year and a half ago, it was very clear that the Falcon 9 was the cheapest, most reliable option to get Kuiper satellites into space, and it was ready then. And by the way, we did get some news from the, the meeting on the inside when they were going over it with the board. Uh, they didn't even consider SpaceX, and it wasn't really much of a discussion. So... The fact that they didn't even consider SpaceX back then really, I thought, just demonstrated their, their complete refusal to launch with them, whether that's because they don't want to give money to a competitor, whether that's the personal feud between Elon and Jeff Bezos or something else. I'll let you chime in what you think their ultimate reasons are, but it seemed very clear that the most logical option from a business point of view, they simply did not want to go with. So now they have clearly done a 180 and they have given just three launches for Falcon 9 so it's kind of like the bare minimum. Uh, we can see in the highlight here the move is a surprise from Amazon given the company's Kuiper system aims to compete with Starlink in broadband internet nothing we, we didn't know. So the SpaceX deal marks the latest shift in Amazon's strategy as the company pushes to get Kuiper to space in time to meet federal reg regulations. Now this is a very important bit right here the FCC rules require that Amazon deploy half its constellation of 3,236 satellites to orbit by July 2026. So a severe time crunch in order to get 
you know, call it 1,600 satellites into orbit, and these are pretty beefy satellites too, larger than at least Starlink version 1. They did launch a couple prototypes successfully on a legacy ULA rocket, which is now no longer being built and going out of service, and those two prototypes were also much delayed, originally hoping to go on first an ABL rocket, and then Vulcan, and then sliding to this other rocket, because they really just needed to get them up and get them tested. So um, that's the news today. The discussion is really, you know, why are they doing this now if they wouldn't do it before? Uh, what's changed? Well, I think there's a few things that have changed. Number one is Amazon and their board of directors and Jeff Bezos actually got sued by their own shareholders, something that I believe the shareholders are in the right about. They are basically suing the board for not even considering SpaceX in these massive launch contracts. SpaceX would have been much cheaper. They would have been ready to launch much sooner, but they simply refused to do it because Jeff Bezos' other company is a competitor and obviously the feud and all the rest. And the point of Amazon shareholders is, listen, we're, we're shareholders in Amazon. Uh, we're not shareholders in Blue Origin. So all we really care about is the bottom line for Amazon, which is a very fair point of view. So I think this is a lot of pressure being put on the board because I don't think they have a huge case for why they wouldn't consider SpaceX. It's hard to argue like they shouldn't have. I mean, I don't know what possible argument they can make that would have merit in the courts. So uh, yeah, they, they did uh, do an about face and give the contract for some launches to SpaceX. Another reason they might have done this beyond the uh, lawsuit is that we've had several delays for these rockets. So uh, first up, this is a previous story from this year. I talked about it previously, but the Vulcan was supposed to be launching, well, it's had several delays over the years, but the most recent launch target was in May of 2023, and then they were pressurizing, uh, pressure testing their upper stage Centaur, and it exploded. So uh, that caused a lot of delays. They had to go back and basically strengthen that upper stage to ensure it could handle the stresses. Uh, they are now planning to launch actually on Christmas Eve. So they are getting close, but this was yet another delay that I'm sure Amazon wasn't happy about and uh, was not counting on. Vulcan is a rocket that they are really, I would say... They're really counting on to bridge the gap to New Glenn is kind of my thoughts on Amazon strategy. So, um, and then you have Ariane 6, which also has now encountered delays. Uh, the Ariane 6 rocket has been delayed from its original goal of launching in 2020. Right now, if hot fire tests late this year go well, and by the way, the hot fire test did just go well, we'll go to that a bit, a bit later. We're looking at Ariane 6 making its first launch maybe mid-2024, which is four years later than they originally planned. So that second rocket for Amazon, also very late. And then, of course, New Glenn. I think we all know it's been delayed multiple times. We will get to some news on that, some promising signs lately. But um, just a few quotes here. They announced a schedule slip for the first launch. This is a couple years ago in March of 2021 when they said they would not launch until the fourth quarter of 2022 at the earliest. But then in March of 2022, that first launch did slip to no earlier than Q4 2023. Clearly, that's um, unlikely to happen at this point. We haven't seen a fully assembled rocket to launch in 2023 is unreasonable. So I think everybody is kind of looking at that August 2024 date as the the next potential time where New Glenn might launch. Once again, more on that later after we discuss the implications of this SpaceX deal. So what does this SpaceX deal mean for the wider industry? What does it mean for Rocket Lab? Am I disappointed? Uh, short answer is no, I'm not really disappointed. I'm not really upset by this. I have said previously, I do hope that Neutron will get some Kuiper launches, but look, I think at this point, Amazon is just sick of waiting for upcoming rockets to get ready. They bought launches on three rockets. All three of them have encountered severe delays. Would Amazon really want to place their money on yet another rocket that isn't ready and 
you know, is likely to counter delays. That let's be honest here, this is the rocket business. There's almost always delays. Eventually, you know, I do think Neutron will get it done and Rocket Lab will get it done, but a delay would not shock me by any means. Um, and you know, if price was their bottom line and they weren't too worried about the timeline, they could also award a contract to Relativity. They've been a big talking point lately. They do give out discounts for you know signing these contracts to their backlog before the rocket is even ready something it doesn't appear that rocket lab is doing so i think really this comes down to the time crunch they need these rockets flying in 2025 for sure and out of all the options they're looking at right now uh, the one the only like 100 percent basically sure case is the Falcon 9. So that's, you know, I think why they are buying those launches. The other question we might have is, does this signal some kind of a lack of confidence from Amazon side of things in the Vulcan? Because they really do have a lot invested in those Vulcan launches. And, you know, maybe it's possible. Um, I, they do often get insider information, customers that is, and tours and stuff like that, and details. Uh, maybe, you know, they're just not confident in the ability for ULA to just scale up that fast. We'll have to see what happens with their first launch. But, you know, even with that launch out of the way, it's a fully expendable rocket at this point. So uh, it could be a hedge against that as well and maybe a sign that, you know, there are some concerns for the Vulcan's ability to scale up their cadence even after that first launch. It could be something like that as well. So I think this is the right move for Amazon. For SpaceX, I definitely respect their willingness to launch for competitors and basically say, we're confident we have the best product. We'll launch for our competitors. We don't need a monopoly. We'll make our money on the launch as well as outcompete you on the Constellation. So uh, yeah, props to SpaceX for doing that and uh, not really disappointed for Neutron because you know I just don't think that Amazon could really count on them for being ready in the time frame and this is three falcon 9 launches by the way so that's about um 18 tons per launch in reusable mode downrange that would be more like four launches for neutron to do that same amount of payload if they are landing down range because neutrons 13 tons versus falcon 9 18 tons so that's that's a lot of launches to ask for neutron in what would be basically its first year of operation probably not just practical we've even heard peter say you know they plan to scale up slowly they'll do one launch then maybe three and kind of a similar growth rate as electron so i think it just makes a ton of sense sense for amazon um i think amazon shareholders should be happy with this and longer term uh i don't see amazon wanting to launch with a competitor when they do have another viable option available for similar price points. So I'm not really scared that, oh no, down the line, Amazon's going to launch everything on Falcon 9 and SpaceX. Uh, not a huge concern for me on that front. So with that out of the way, I did want to just share some more updates on those three other rockets that Amazon did hire launches for because we have had some updates lately. Let's go first take a look at the Ariane 6 which is finally making some progress here. So uh, Ariane 6 you might have noticed did have a hot fire just this week where they were basically testing the engines the whole rocket is assembled we should see the uh here we go with the exhaust it was a mostly successful hot fire from what i understand it did shut down a few seconds earlier than expected but you know not a huge deal and uh, a good sign for the rocket that frankly uh, needs all the good signs it can get this will kind of be europe's launcher their strategic asset for launch if you will i don't expect it to compete very well on the commercial markets for cost we can see the nozzles moving back and forth here so they do have you know good control uh, steering that way although this is not going to be a reusable vehicle um, but yeah a very successful test fire here we can see the rocket in most of its glory although it is now getting covered up by those clouds um, congratulations to Ariane Space and a good sign that they 
may be on track for their first launch next year, finally getting this rocket up and going, uh, despite all those criticisms they may have. Blue Origin, also some exciting news. Now, of course, the company is notoriously closed, tight-lipped about their status and their developments, and they're not like SpaceX developing right out in the open, but we did see this exciting piece of hardware outside their factory, and this does appear, at least, to be a piece of flight hardware, not like a mock-up like we've seen many times before. This does kind of line up with the timelines previously stated by Blue Origin executives. Um, they said that the first flight vehicle should arrive at an integration facility by the end of this year. So this could be one piece of it getting ready to go to that integration facility. Uh, and there could be other pieces we potentially missed that are smaller, more hidden, more covered up. So uh, this is a, a, a good sign for New Glenn. And in terms of their launch schedule, they are scheduled for their first launch to launch a couple of Rocket Lab satellites, believe it or not. So Rocket Lab is building two satellites for NASA to go to Mars, the Escapade satellites, and uh, the launch has gone to New Glenn. Now, this is quite a cheap launch. The procurement database shows it was worth $20 million, so no way Blue Origin is actually making money on this. And they even said... Um, they didn't expect it to be the primary payload on their mission, but it is. So uh, this, I think, kind of gives Blue Origin a firm timeline that they need to hit. Um, you know, they can't keep pushing it back anymore. Now they have NASA as a customer with a Mars mission. Uh, you really don't want to delay this one. So hopefully they get it off. It's a little uncomfortable having those Rocket Lab satellites uh you know, going to Mars on the very first mission from New Glenn certainly uh, would be extremely disappointed to see them explode, not make it to Mars. That'd be, you know, it'd be sad. Rocket Lab would get paid either way. But as a, you know, someone who's interested in the research and NASA's goals, it would definitely be a sad result. So hopefully they do get the reliability down and nail that first launch. This launch, yeah, as I said, is scheduled for August 2024. And then for ULA, as I said previously, Tori Bruno has told us that the first launch of the Vulcan is now targeting Christmas Eve for commercial moonshot mission. So another uh, kind of interplanetary mission for the inaugural launch of a rocket, not what you usually see happen. They will be sending a payload to the moon for astrobiotic i believe their peregrine lunar lander could be the first commercial lunar lander american to land on the moon very exciting as a part of the nasa clips program we are under a month away now for this first launch could be a great christmas present to rocket fans if it does go off they do have an instantaneous launch window so if they have to have any delays in the countdown i think it'll have to be a scrub but it will be exciting to watch, that's for sure. So from all three rockets here, there are some signs that they are finally getting closer to a launch. That's it for me today, guys. It's exciting to see we have all three of these new rockets making progress, visible progress towards launch. Let me know down in the comments which one you expect will launch first. Obviously, Vulcan would be the front runner, but who do you expect to launch first between Ariane 6 and New Glenn? Uh, I guess it's the race between the turtle and the turtle on that one but it'll be fun to see. Uh, and also let me know what you think about this SpaceX deal and the implications for the larger launch industry. Always interested in having more of those discussions down in the comments below. Please do consider subscribing. It will be very much appreciated for every new subscriber. And with that, I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye for now.